Good afternoon. My name is Eric Tucker, and I cover the FBI Justice Department and National Security for the Associated Press in Washington. This is an indictment that charges former President Donald Trump in connection with his efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. This is the second criminal case that's been brought by Justice Department Special Counsel Jack Smith against Donald Trump as he seeks to reclaim the White House in 2024. This indictment covers a tumultuous two-month period between his loss to Joe Biden in November 2020 and January 6, 2021, when his supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol in an effort to halt the counting of electoral votes that would have handed formally the election to Joe Biden. During the course of this investigation, prosecutors examined a broad variety of schemes by Trump and his allies to allow him to try to cling to power among the many various aspects that the government analyzed and assessed was one that involved enlisting so-called fake electors in seven battleground states that were won by Biden to assert falsely that they were actually the real electors and that they were casting their votes for Trump. And this is a, uh, a scheme that was developed by legal advisors for Trump and something that the Justice Department has spent more than a year trying to get to the bottom of. This investigation was really notable because of the very senior Trump administration officials who wound up cooperating with the government, either because they were forced to or because they voluntarily did so. In April, former Vice President Mike Pence appeared for hours before a grand jury in Washington, and Pence is a critical witness because he was repeatedly goaded and pressed by Trump to ignore his constitutional duty. And the former president really demanded that he block the counting of electoral votes, that he deny that process on January 6, 2021. Uh, Mike Pence famously refused that overture from Trump, and um, that uh, caused a, a significant fissure in their relationship. Um, but that was something that, that prosecutors examined. Um, we also know that uh, Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani uh, met uh, voluntarily with investigators, and we know that um, many state election officials, people who are subjected to pressure campaigns um, from Donald Trump to overturn the election results in their states, they also met with investigators. This indictment is really notable because it concerns a very dark period in American history when a sitting president refused to accept his loss in a presidential election and work to try to overturn the results. It is a bedrock principle of American democracy that a president or a candidate, when they lose a race, that they step aside and hand over power. And this investigation sought to uncover all the different ways in which Donald Trump failed to do that. Good evening. My name is Eric Tucker and I cover the FBI Justice Department and National Security for the Associated Press. Former President Donald Trump has just been indicted in connection with his efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Now, this is an episode in modern American history that's been the subject of public hearings and long running investigations. For the first time, we now have criminal charges related to a two month effort by Trump and his allies to help him cling to power and to undo the results of the presidential election that he lost to Democrat Joe Biden. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. The indictment was issued by a grand jury of citizens here in the District of Columbia and it sets forth the crimes charged in detail. 
I encourage everyone to read it in full. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6, 2021 was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. The men and women of law enforcement who defended the U.S. Capitol on January 6th are heroes. They are patriots and they are the very best of us. They did not just defend a building or the people sheltering in it. They put their lives in the line to defend who we are as a country and as a people. They defended the very institutions and principles that define the United States. Since the attack on our Capitol, the Department of Justice has remained committed to ensuring accountability for those criminally responsible for what happened that day. This case is brought consistent with that commitment, and our investigation of other individuals continues. In this case, my office will seek a speedy trial so that our evidence can be tested in court and judged by a jury of citizens. In the meantime, I must emphasize that the indictment is only an allegation and that the defendant must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. I would like to thank the members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation who are working on this investigation with my office, as well as the many career prosecutors and law enforcement agents from around the country who have worked on previous January 6th investigations. These women and men are public servants of the very highest order, and it is a privilege to work alongside them. Thank you.